Okay, I wanted to talk about the ontological argument. Uh, I know uh, you've, uh, well, it's a bit of, uh, well, I mean, atheists, you, uh, we atheists usually say that uh, the ontological argument uh, doesn't have m much merit because you're defining things, well, God into existence. Right. But I wanted to talk about the logical merits. I mean, Logically, I can't really see a flaw other than because you're defining things from the real world into existence. So, um, actually, I'm not sure can you, you clarify yeah. what you mean by defining things from the real word, world into existence? Because to me, uh, that sounds yeah, like yeah. there are things in the real world and you're making them exist. Uh, yeah, well, uh, the ontological argument basically uh, says that there are uh, uh, maximally great being would be greater if it existed and that's de defining a god into existence mm -hmm. that's um, mm -hmm. a phrase that i've heard many atheists say i mean i think matthew hartis has certainly said it um and others uh, well, so the so, responses to the ontological argument which is that you're imagining the god into existence um yeah well i realize that the main flaw is uh, that uh, you can prove that uh, so, uh, that something is greater if it exists. Uh, but I'm not sure if it, uh, that same argument could be used with some other property to define something else into existence. Yeah. And what is the issue with that logical? Sure. So to be clear, sorry, the people have taken the the other quality and the most that quality. So it's um, there is a thing that is the most smelly thing that exists. Dawkins. Yeah, yeah. anything that is uh, exists and is smelly is more smelly than something that doesn't exist. Um, therefore, God is the smelliest thing that exists. Right. Well, um, or or, but, or, yeah. or specifically, uh, or that you know, you know, we can come up with something maximally smelly. Yeah, and the there's thing a reason that, that, that is Jesus, maximally smelly we call God. Yeah, ah, that's the exact wording I was going to yeah. say. Therefore, Jesus really needed to get his feet washed on that occasion. So he washed people's <laughs> feet, actually. Yeah, he's well. Uh, no, sure, the, the, his his feet were washed by. Women. Maybe he was just really tired of living in there's, a house with twelve other dudes who didn't wash their feet. <laughs> I don't dingy, know. Little In any case, Jamie. yeah, whatever. I you know, don't <laughs> stop me from saying snarky things about Jesus, please. But in any case, um, the 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 uh, point at which the logical flaws that's originally stated, there's a couple of them. One, um, the idea that there is a thing that is the most powerful thing in existence. So if you have the kind of definition of powerful that we sort of assume, you can leave that as it is and go forward and say, yes, but that doesn't mean that it is the most powerful thing that can be imagined. Mm -hmm. So for example, yeah. um, a really, right. really powerful space laser could be the most powerful thing that exists, right? The most mm -hmm. um, powerful yeah. thing that you can imagine would be a thing that was more than an idea, but that doesn't mean that that idea exists in reality. I feel like that right. wasn't as clear as I intended it to be, but can I take a stab what, at it? Yeah, what, well, yeah, just uh, let me finish up my thought because I've only half uh, thrown it out there. Um, I know that usually my thoughts go uncompleted. But of the things that exist, if you ranked them in order of powerful, sure, you could have a first most powerful thing. But for what we know and can demonstrate, the most powerful thing that exists could be something that is much less powerful than... Uh, an existent version of the Abrahamic God. Mm. So saying, right. if this existed, it would be more powerful, doesn't mean that that thing exists, or at least that's the take I would on it. You probably yeah. have a m better, more succinct wording of that. No, well, I, I just wanted to add more to it, that's all. Oh, okay. uh, so what I wanted to add to it was that originally this argument uh, had the omnis in it, mm. right? Omni, omni, uh, mm. Omnipotent, yeah. right? Oh. All-powerful, omnipresent. Um, is everywhere, omnipot um, I'm sorry, omniscient, which is all-knowing, omnibenevolent, which is all-loving. Uh, you know, so if, if you have an... I just use maximally great because it's what well, modern apologists tend to use. Actually, there's a reason why they did that. 
The reason why they did that is because there was an argument against it, and the argument against it was that there were a whole bunch of really, really funny ways that you can show that that just can't exist, right? You can't have an all-powerful being because there was the, you know, could God create a rock so heavy, a boulder so heavy that even he couldn't lift it, right? Could God create a burrito so spicy that he couldn't eat it? Um, And so they switched to maximally. But that's just a semantic game because there's no difference, right? If if we had someone calling yeah, well, in that's actually yeah. presenting it, you would hear maximally because all of a sudden you can kind of wiggle your way out of it, but it still doesn't make sense. They still need to be able to respond to that. Yeah, well, um, uh, what I was, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if Jamie uh, fully understands that uh, I'm playing de- devil's advocate here. Um, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm an atheist. Uh, I've, uh, a couple of times I've said atheist as in third person, but uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, it's just that I'm not entirely convinced that uh, the defining things into existence part of the argument is fallacious logically. I understand why the logic uh, I mean, the fact that it's I agree. Uh, true logically does not imply that it's true in the real world. Because logic, as I understand it, it's a human concept that to represent reality, but a concept I, invented by humans. Um, I agree with your conclusion, but for different reasons. So um, hmm. the fact that what we define a, as logic is explained and given terms uh, and our representation of the, you know, logic as it can be applied to reality, the fact that that model happens to be using words that are constructed by humans doesn't relate to the difference between an argument that is valid and an argument um, that Mm -hmm. is sound. So an argument that is valid is one where if the premises are true, the conclusion necessarily follows. Um, and I, I know yeah. I'm stealing your thunder because this is one of your favorite things to talk about, Eric. So thank well, you. Uh, but um, I, what I will I say is, it, it sure, it can be a valid argument, but unless you can demonstrate that those premises mm-hmm. are true, you've set up the framework that you would test, uh, hypothetically, to demonstrate a god. Mm-hmm. But, oh, a maximally great thing that could ever exist exists is something that... Uh, particularly if you do also define that thing as the greatest player of hide and seek ever, not something that you can demonstrate in reality. Mm. Right. So, so, uh, the, so but, when you okay. so, sorry to no, to to conclude. So when you say I don't think it's um, uh, logically fallacious, sure, the the premises as they're laid out um, can you can say those things, but the conclusion. I would say, doesn't necessarily follow. So it's not uh, necessarily logically fallacious. I, you can say that it's not valid. But also, you can say yeah, that okay. the premises can't be demonstrated. Yeah, well, in, in the or case happen. of the ontological argument, uh, it's true that you can demonstrate uh, demonstrate that, uh, yeah, uh, maximally greatest being has to exist and so on, or more Wait. that. Existing is better than Hold not on. existing. Hold on, really? Yeah. Uh, mm. That's okay. So, I, so let's let's try this. Um, w- w- Jamie used stinky, right? Mm. Um, yeah. So, if something is maximally stinky, does that mean it exists because it's better that it exists than that it doesn't? Wouldn't it be better You'd that it doesn't exist because it's maximally stinky for non-existing? Things. Okay, then define great. Yeah. Uh. I mean, uh, and define well, better. Non-existing things is uh, is an, a, a universal concept among humans. Um, existing things is a universal concept among humans. Is that what you just said? Uh, no, existing things is something that uh, I mean, existing is uh, a concept that that we get all humans, if not uh, uh, understand. Okay. Whether something that doesn't exist is great or how great it is, is something that would need to be defined as premise. Sure. And I, I don't think I would grant in that premise that existing is necessarily great. 
I mean, in the case of something maximally stinky, I'd rather that not exist. So does that mean that we can only pick the good things that exist and leave out the bad things? And don't you get uh, an infinite yeah. regress, right? You can take this and you can shoot it all the way back. Okay, well, there has to be something greater than that because I imagined a thing that's maximally great and I just add one to it, right? And, and, then, right. and then what do we get? Yeah. Right? I, I mean, what you have is you have an argument that's based on special pleading because it says, I am putting the cap here and then not going any further. So, I, I mean, it, you need to get away from the special pleading, right? Mm. And I know that you're just running through the argument, but these are different ways to look at mm. it, is that if somebody says, you know, oh, well, uh, existence is better than non-existence. No, don't, don't grant that premise, right? If they say, mm. well, right. maximally great, it has to be a single thing. No, don't grant that premise because then you mm. actually get people that say, okay, well, then maximally great means that it needs to have a mind. It needs to have, you know, a uh, uh, consciousness, kindness, yeah. ambivalent, and, and, and then they start stacking shit on and then you got to wonder, okay, when are you going to draw the line? Mm. You know? Right. And, and I mean, Jamie got it absolutely right. You know, when you define something into existence, you can do that one of two ways. Number one, you can name something that exists. I think God is the universe. Cool. Then your God yeah. actually exists. Fucking great. Right? It, it doesn't do right. much. The other one is when you come up with your own hypothetical deity and just go on this road and you say, this is how I define this thing. But you don't mm. ever show what that means. You know, you're just going in this circle jerk, you know, that just never ends. Um, and so the best mm. thing to do is stop it, you know, when it starts. Say, hey, okay, yeah. you need to back it up. You know, think of a, think of a murderer. Think of a pedophile, mm. yeah. right? Is it better that a pedophile or a murderer exists than not exist? Right? God, in, in, in the, the story of Noah, kills all but a handful of people, murdering every single child, every baby at its mother's breast, every, every animal except for, you know, a, a few. In, that's in their story. Yeah. Right? A, 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 a great, a, a, the truly great thing would be if that God didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. So but um, I think to be clear, the problems definitely arise when you try and apply um, an abstract, logical, mm. uh, logically constructed argument that is detached from reality. When you take that and you try and apply it to reality, you run into all kinds of problems, particularly mm. if it doesn't have testable premises. Mm. Right. Um, it's why. For thousands of years, people have examined logic, and it's been very helpful, right? Since the um, mm -hmm. early Greeks in Western thought, there's been ideas about logic and epistemology, but it took the last 200 years um, for m modern science to develop. And modern science means we can take mm -hmm. this phone call and broadcast to the Internet at the same time. Well, yeah. I don't know I if mean, I agree I, I'm not that. um, That's kind I'm of not, uh... I don't want to diminish the the I mean, influence we, and importance of uh, we philosophy. Derive, well, we derive math and science from philosophy, and out of those, we were able to build and, I and think grow things. I think science certainly like, as resulted from recognizing an epistemology, right? Empiricism is something that needed to be existed before, you know, you could set up scientific parameters to test hypotheses about reality. Um, Math is a, is a way of describing the things that we observe. So, basically, yeah, that's yeah. What's that's, that talk? Yeah, I, yeah. Th this is a conversation yeah. for a beer, I think. Uh, um, Andrew, yeah, um, this has been fun. Oh, yeah. it, it's Andrew, but whatever. Oh, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Alrighty, Andrew. Anything else, Jamie? Before we move on. Um. Well, uh, what would the uh, most Common arguments for air ecology would be. Uh, or a what? Sorry? Air ecology. Oh, air ecology. Actually, I do have an answer to that. 
Uh, so I had an amazing fan of Talk Even mail in, and I I know that I wouldn't have been able to bring this up on the green screen, and I don't think if can. Can we zoom in, Mark? Let's see if we can get this. Yeah. Can we get a zoom? No? Maybe? All right. Ah, uh, you can hardly see it. It says, The Book of Eric. Mm -hmm. True, mm -hmm. because I say so. And um, I, I'm, I'm working on filling it out, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that there are a couple things that if you were to compare them side to side with the Bible, oh, mine's better. Yep. Mine says that slavery is bad. <laughs> right? Of course. My, I, my, yeah. my, mine says, don't be a dick. Yeah. That's a good one. Right? Hey, Eric, um, does your uh, uh, book relegate no. women to second class non citizens? Oh, uh, th that, under, that falls under not being a dick. I see. Or. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Hunt or a jerk, don't be a jerk. Uh, yeah. Said that uh, if you uh, if he could replace every time the uh, slavery shows up in the Bible in the Bible and uh, with something else, it would be a much better book. Well, and and you know, uh -huh. if you were to go by other things, right? This book that I'm holding, if uh, you look at the stream, it's nice and small, easy to read, right? I say it's it's, it's more actually portable. smaller than my Book of Mormon. Right? So, definitely, that one wins. I got my Bible here. Look at this monster. I mean, come on. Come on. Um, it's a, oh, yeah. <laughs> it it, it cuts to the point without long, rambling stories that include slavery, misogyny, mm -hmm. death, and genocide. Mine has actual science in it. I should share that out on social media. I'll start to post uh, books yeah. from my, my book I, of Ericology. I made that joke deliberately, like, yes, it came as a journal to be a vessel of the words of the prophet. So... Okay, it is the official so, uh, standpoint of the ACA that Ericology uh, is not an actual religion. But if you want to do it, do it. I want it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right, brother. I love that. All right. Well, see you. All right. Take care, buddy.